Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are going to try to send a probe over to Duna. We have 15 days until the window and I have a option to unlock some technology but I'm not entirely sure anything is going to help us with our mission to Duna. We have a possibility of miniaturization, electrics, recycling and storage technology. We're probably only going to send a probe, not a Kerbal. Otherwise, well, maybe a large container would be a good idea, but I don't know if it contains, it isn't, well, it can do food, but apparently not the water. So we're going to have an array of containers to have enough life support. And considering our how our Kerbals have been doing, I don't think a small ship is going to do. We're going to need radiation protection. We're going to need a whole bunch of stuff. Of course, room and perhaps plants uh, something I mean something like that to make them happy so I'm not sure a shower apparently could work uh, but yeah so that's gonna probably be down the road we're probably gonna stick to a probe first for Duna and given that we might want well there's no bigger antenna than what we have right now here uh, there's some lights but and there's, of course, solar panels, but we've got good solar panels. And mainly, we're probably going to just use the RTG because it's just so much better. Uh, here, we have some antennas. And antennas are important to us, but we already have longer range antennas than what we have in miniaturization. The positive side to miniaturization are mob propellant spheres like that or mob propellant tank assemblies. But I, need a real, I just need a straight tank, you know, something inline. And I don't see an inline tank that's going to work out. So that's not great. And the little, because this is miniaturization, it's got little antennae, but we don't want little antennae. We want big antennae. And we don't care about handrails. Propulsion systems. Oh, the ant engine. It's my favorite. Um, it's probably still the best thing. Oh, uh, here we have the Oscar B fuel tank, though. Hmm. We really don't have enough for both. It's either going to be propulsion systems or the miniaturization. Now here we have some supply tanks. This water, oxygen, but not the food. That's what these have. Miniaturization also has a Clampatron Junior docking port, which would simplify our docking stuff. And we probably will be needing to do more of that. But in terms of efficiency, having the Oscar B fuel tank is sort of nice with the ant engine. It's better than having a whole bunch of mop propellant and RCS ports. Now, the miniaturization has a lot of stuff in it, though. Antennas that we probably don't need. Simon's experiments, lots of RCS ports. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but I do think that ultimately propulsion systems with the ant engine and the Oscar B is actually better right now. So that is what I've got, and we will see how it goes. Let's take a look at the contracts. So anything for Duna? Probably not. <laughs> Probably they have not thought ahead. They have actually thought ahead to EVE, a specific or orbit of EVE, but not for Duna. All right, so here's the first thing we are going to send over to Duna. It is a probe with science. And because it has expensive science on it, we have spared no expense on the other things. And so we have a large communication array here. We've got two of those communication dishes and also two of these high gain antennae. And if we take a look at the comms here, basically they are the three most powerful ones we have. This one says 43.2 million kilometers at the SN level two. This one 16.3 million kilometers and uh, the high gain one. What does that even look like here? Uh, where are you? Oh, oh there it is. 16.3 uh, million kilometers. So uh, hopefully they combine to be something good. None of them are relay antennae. We don't have relay antennae that have that kind of range. We have that one, but uh, that's only 1.2 million kilometers. So yeah. It's a huge assembly of antennae. We've got the probe core with the data capacity. 
And then we've also got RTGs. Actually, uh, I think I missed uh, symmetry. We, we're going to have four RTGs and four solar panels. Because, again, not taking any chances with the science here. And then we're using a single Oscar, Oscar B fuel tank and an ant, ant engine. And the ant engine has high quality, of course, because we are being very profligate. Uh, we are spending a lot of money here. So we have uh, 1,800 meters per second in the probe itself with the ant engine. And then we have this interesting Viger uh, liquid fuel tank with less monopropellant and then a Hebel engine that we've been using. And so the Hebel engine will provide our transfer and probably we won't need all of it. But this is an expandable system. And then uh, here we have the Bosser balloon tanks, liquid fuel and oxidizer because we are using the Titan engine. That is uh, LR87, though they add a few extra digits. And so, yeah, just liquid fuel in here this time, no hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and as you can see, it gives us a lot of thrust weight ratio. The reason why we are not going with the hydrogen and oxygen is to cut down on part count because 30 parts still. So yeah, and that is our highest thrust engine. Even though it's not very efficient, uh, we favor just because the fuel is dense in there and we just wanted the thrust. So that is the situation. The probe isn't very heavy after all. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to time warp the extra 10 days until the window, or 15 days until the window, and then we will launch. We did have room for a launch clamp. You'll notice I did put a launch clamp on it this time. If things look like they're working out, we'll try to launch similar things to EVE. Comms should be easier. Oh, we do have Transfer Window Planner. I forgot I had added that in. Let's just check what Transfer Window Planner has to say. Yeah, we're pretty close. We could probably do it now. Looks like ejection is 1,747 and arrival is 1,000. We have plenty. I made sure to put plenty. We are not taking any chances, darn it. Well, lots of clouds overhead. And it's a little bit dim out here, but I think we can just go ahead. SAS on. Throttle is up. Ignition and launch. Staging is a little bit off here. All right. Our first interplanetary probe is on its way. We could have put more science on, but I won't overload it this time. This is basically a single stage to orbit rocket. I guess we don't have to do both of those at the same time. We can throttle down. We're getting a little bit high, actually. Let's uh, think about single stage systems. Let me separate the fairings at low thrust here. Okay, well that was clean. Once we get into space, I'll get the antennae out. Though this one should be always active anyway, and it's our longest range one. Really awkward shaped, but nice in terms of its range and mass. It's not very heavy. Okay, well this is getting way too high. We do have multiple ignitions, right? <laughs> oh no, we don't. Ignition zero. It only has one ignition. We'll have to watch out for that. Oh, almost made a drastic mistake. All right, well, drastic maneuvers up ahead. Obviously, at Duna, we we uh, won't get as much power from the solar panels, but they're really just to supplement while we're running the solar pa uh, sorry the science experiments. Oh, that one sort of clips that dish. These are the panels from Explorer Six, so history holds we should have one break on us or something. What was that a different one? I forget. Maybe it was... I think it was Explorer 6 that that happened. Okay, let's finish this off. High thrust. And it's off. Okay. Well, not quite orbit, but that's good. We can dispose of this. Okay, we are in orbit. It was awkward, but it worked.
And most importantly, we didn't lose comms before we finished the burn. And actually, uh, looking at it, we would be fine. So, yep. Well, it might be... Yep. Well, we just... We were in a high orbit, so that helped. All right, let's see about our transfer. Okay, well, we've got a plot here. And the question is whether it's safe comm-wise. Also, mid-course adjustment might, might be necessary, but we need to start to burn soon, so... I'm just gonna take a chance here. All right, here it goes. Hebel engine is active. We're here. We have a comm line to Gamma 3, so that helps. Hopefully. Okay, well, that's as close as that's going to get for now. We have to do a mid-course adjustment anyway. And what I'm going to do is we are going to do the mid-course adjustments uh, just before the eve window so that we can check up on it, which is basically halfway. It's 117 days to Duna there and 56 days to the eve window. So we can check up on it, make sure our comms are the way I expect them to be. Forgot all about Ike. Thanks a little bit further out there this time. It's not interfering at all. That's a little bit sad. <laughs> it's a little bit sad that it's not interfering with us. Okay, and there's an Ike encounter that isn't too rough. I mean, it gets us suborbital at Duna, but we can fix that. Uh, so that'll take 743 over there, which is fine. We have plenty of that, so add that alarm, and we are good to go. So this is on its way. For now, it's got electric charge. I mean, really, it should be fine with the RTGs. Let us, and right now in the dark, since it's balanced, it is fine with the RTGs. But we can just start the experiments so that they are waiting and in interplanetary space they can grab some stuff if they if that's a possibility. We've got a folding magnetometer boom. Got the micrometeoroid impact detector. Oh, now it's consuming. Well, now let's see if it's okay. Okay, well, it's recharging. All right. Was that everything? Oh, Geiger counter. Okay, all the experiments are running. It is recharging. It might be a little bit short once we get to Duna, but we'll see. Okay, so this is good. Let's launch something else. So this is a prospective sort of mission. I'm sending over some supplies into orbit around Duna, just in case we send Kerbals there later, and what we have is a, a docking port, a large docking port, sort of meant for a space station, and at least that's what it said, and hopefully it allows for transferring resources, because the others definitely say no, basically, uh, and so we've got, it's a two-parter, it's got a docking uh, fork and a ring, this is the fork part, uh, maybe I should have made the ring part this one, but anyway. Um, the others basically say that they are not allowing transfer resource to transfer resources. So, no transfer resources, no transfer resources, no transfer resources. So, this one hopefully does, and we are going to use it. So, as docking port down there and the ant engine on top replacing the big antenna. So this has fewer antennae. So we'll see whether that works out. Otherwise, we've got life support containers down here, and uh, oxygen there, food there, and it's water. There's water and other stuff down the middle, and it's enough for one year for one Kerbal. So that's what we've got there. And otherwise, we've got the Oscarby fuel tanks and for the ant engine, and we've got large solar panels that we're using for the first time. So uh, you know what? Looking at this, I'm gonna make them high because this could be waiting for a very long time, so high quality on that stuff. 
Uh, it's very expensive for a prospective mission. But this time we're not packing the RTGs. It's going to be straight up solar panels and we'll see how good that is. Going from standard to high on this is more than 3000 for the cost. Um, that's a lot. But two years is not a long time considering there's a year of supplies. Does it need to be powered? I don't know, but it'd probably be nice. I guess we'll pay for it. I don't know. Anyway, we might be unwise with our money, but up here we have a hydrolock stage this time. This is an eyesore, and so it'll finish orbit and then do our transfer. And then down here we've got Prometheus tanks, Titan tanks, and the same engine. And we have three parts, so we don't have to clamp this time. And the eyesore is just standard. Oh, well, we should probably have it high because it's burning for 7 minutes and 31 seconds. We don't need the 179 ignitions, though. And that just about does it, I think. One ignition. Does it get two ignitions? It gets two ignitions if we do high quality, but we don't really need that. So we'll see. This is just a bunch of supplies. We'll see how it works. We haven't gotten the normal ore scanner. There are things that sort of maybe pretend to scan for ore in the science section. Uh, I'm not too sure I trust them. So we'll see. Okay, but anyway. That is for a different time. Let us go with these supplies. Uh, we do have boil off. I think it would be wise to launch right now even though it's in the dark. So SAS on, throttle is up, and... Whoa, the pitch and rolling yaw going all over the place. Uh, launch. Whoa. Okay. I'll try not going so high this time. Okay, throttling down since our apoapsis is already in space. Oh, but we're getting hot. We're getting hot. Let's keep pitching up there. Okay, fairings. Ooh, wrong fairings. <laughs> wrong fairings. Okay, there we go. Okay, staging. Ignition. Oh, we still had a magnetometer boom. I did not mean to have a magnetometer boom. I think I mistook it for a, a different thing. The high gain antenna. Okay, we are in orbit. And we can plot for Duna. Wonder how many times during this episode I'll say Mars instead of Duna. <laughs> But uh, I guess we will have to wait in orbit. And we've got 2,300 and uh, sorry, 2,600 in this stage anyway. So let's wait in orbit and do this a little bit better. Okay, we have everything plotted out, including the capture, and we should have enough delta V for everything. We don't have much power right now because no RTGs on this one. So yeah, but then we are. Experiencing boil off, but we're gonna try to make one orbit for going. Okay, seems like boil off wasn't too severe. And we go. Okay. Oh, it's wandering and shut down. Well, that'll be close enough for now. We can fix up the rest on the mid course adjustment. Well, this stage is not going to have any hydrogen left once we get to the mid-course adjustment. We weren't really expecting it to. But maybe we'll see. We'll just carry it along for now. The probe itself certainly has enough for the rest. It should get into a low Mars orbit eventually, though because it'll have to rendezvous with whatever crude vessel needs the supplies. Anyway, we'll see about that. 
for now we have that main course adjustment available and I don't think I want to send anything else to do now it's very expensive and uh, we want to check on the comms first so let's forego the rest of this Duna window and we are going to follow along with this we'll find out what the next Duna window is okay so to the tracking station and we'll time warp and see if there's any warnings or anything radiation scan sun space global temperature scan sun space high transmitted telemetry report transmitted okay looking good reaction wheel failed on gamma it's gone for good well gamma is an old satellite okay we have made it to the mid course adjustment time and the comms look green and indeed all the liquid hydrogen has boiled off so we will separate that off and we need to control in the reverse direction and there isn't really that functionality here huh oh well that's fine we can just control from here instead we might have overdone it on the comms well it's 93 percent i think probably it's prudent our antennae are sort of in the direction of the ant engine but it was hard to figure out how else to put them okay we are doing the burn this can't turn very fast right now i didn't add any rcs ports and i guess the little reaction wheel on this is overburdened yeah we have to be careful with that the ant engine definitely doesn't gimbal and it takes a bit to capture but we have it you might want to do that earlier depending on where the comm lines are but let's get a SOI change alarm for this one and that's all set let's take a look at the probe well this one is far more nimble I think there's a reaction wheel in this assembly of tanks here this uh, liquid fuel tank thing which is helping out it's pretty full featured it's got RCS ports it's got mop propellant I don't even know where it hides most of this stuff well, I guess I see the mop propellant tanks there but it could be its own sort of probe this has 97 percent signal strength so yeah overdid it okay and go and Let's see. And I would still like a like sort of opportunity maybe. We might have to flatten that out a bit for that. Nope, still tilted. We'll fix that later. So we got 6.5 degrees. Ike would have totally gotten us. Oh, maybe you can do. There we go. 6.5 degrees. This is Ike we're talking about here. All right, so this is on its way, but now we're at the Eve window, and I think we should send one of these probes over to Eve, and maybe with a somewhat less dish. Uh, what what do we have? Well, I mean, the thing is, we're still on the same side as of the sun as Kerbin right now. The worst possible situation is if Kerbin's on the opposite side. Now, we've got ninety-seven percent signal strength. We're 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 here only. 45 million kilometers so we're only 9 million kilometers away and the worst for Duna would be if we were like oh 60 let's say 96, 96 maybe a hundred just round to a hundred million kilometers would be the worst so this is not really testing it out but if you figure it out if this is 97 percent and that's six million oh, sorry nine million kilometers right there then a hundred million shouldn't do too badly I forget if it's dropping off by the square or not so yeah maybe but Eve is not so bad Eve is probably about half the trouble so we'll probably leave off the most expensive antennae whatever they happen to be and we'll get more power from the solar panels at eve 
So we'll probably leave off RTGs or maybe I, I'm hesitant to do that, but maybe it'll be all right. Cost saving measures, I don't know. Let's see if we've got a contract for Eve now. Explore Minmus, plant flag on Minmus. Can we plant flags yet? Uh, there's nothing about Eve actually. Well, it's gotta be another pure science mission. So believe it or not, the big communication array that has the 43 million kilometer range is not the expensive one. It's only 500. Whereas uh, this communication dish, which has about the same max speed, mind you, and only 16 million kilometers, uh, it is 2,600. So we're going to remove those. Uh, the other one, the high gain antenna, is only 600 as well. So we'll leave the two high gain antennae plus the one on the top. This is probably overdoing it as far as Delta V is concerned. Yeah, uh, it is a pretty expensive engine. The eyesore is pretty cheap considering what it does. 270 for the eyesore. Okay, well I've decided the cheaper way to go would be just to have a single Perseus engine and use Hydrolox for the first stage and just make it a really long first stage and we'll get most of the way to orbit and then we'll finish off with this stage. It had extra anyway and, do, and then do the rest with the ant engine as necessary. So that seems to be good to me and we are gonna call this Eve Probe. And here we go. Well the liquid hydrogen doesn't seem to be boiling off right now. Maybe the launch clamp, the launch clamp must be replenishing it since we're using a launch clamp. So we'll just wait until daylight. All right, well, it's a pretty straight rocket. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Probably released it a little bit early there. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Well, if anything, should be able to take this kind of heating. This should be able to, right? Maybe. Well, oh, maybe not. <laughs> I'm not worried, but yeah, probably more friction than I was hoping for here. It's not too bad on the apoapsis right now, though. Okay, fairings and separation. I don't know if we need to ignite just yet. Okay, ignition. And let's get all the science started. Okay, lopsided orbit again. Uh, no big problems. We have power. I've activated all the science. And we have enough to do the transfer to EVE with this stage for sure. So let's plot that out. This seems like pretty far away from EVE to make it work out, but maybe it's because of the relative inclination. We're probably going to have to do something fancy. Eve is usually closer to Kerbin during transfer time. Ejection delta V is 2207 it says. That's probably because we're building in the inclination change right away. So maybe this stage is not enough but we have the end. Okay well there's an encounter with Eve. Two thousand one hundred and thirty. Didn't expect it to be more than Duna, but here we are. Could still use a mid-course adjustment. I think I'll just do a mid-course adjustment for the rest of that. Okay, well, hopefully we'll have comms at the right time. Darude helipad. I guess we can trust the Darude helipad for comms. Fortunately, we can just expend this stage, so no big deal on that. Okay, go. Guess we can try it. 
The rude's not gonna work out for very long. Okay, yes, we are communicating through Gamma for now. Okay, well, let's plot the mid-course adjustment and hopefully- Oh, we've got a flyby of the moon. Well, that's incidental for now. Some inclination is probably all right. And that should be safe from Eve's atmosphere, right? 60 kilometers only, huh? That's slower than I thought it would be. Seems thick. Alright, the capture will be easy. The main course adjustment within our capabilities. We have power. And the uh, science instruments are running. So, we'll just add the main course adjustment there. And I'll wrap it up here, having launched three probes to other planets, our first interplanetary probes. We will see how they do in the next video. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.